Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Thursday, December the 10th, 2020. If you're watching this, you are watching uh, another episode of the Halifax Board of Selectmen's now extraordinary COVID meetings. In case anyone hasn't noticed, we were meeting on Mondays and Thursdays at uh, 1.30. That has now changed to Thursdays only at 3 o'clock. And I apologize for my phone going off. So we're going to start as we have been starting for these meetings by trying to get an update on the COVID situation, which has been changing uh, pretty much daily, as I understand. Um, yeah, it's, you know, probably faster than daily. But since um, our last meeting, there's uh, been 22 confirmed cases. Um, the numbers that I just got from the state, which basically ran um, from 11.25 to 12.8, um, which would include the Thanksgiving numbers, probably not the test results from what we did this weekend best I can see. I doubt if they were able to get that into DPH in time. Had 594 um, cases uh, tested people for a total of 48 confirmed cases in that two week period. Which threw that around 8%. We had been running at 5%. Um, we will be going into the red. There's uh, probably 150 communities right now in the state that are about to jump red. Uh, not to be unexpected, only because Thanksgiving, that was a prediction. So. And Christmas is coming, so. Well, my personal opinion is Christmas is a far more festive holiday than uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, it tends to, uh, between Christmas and New Year's, there's um, a large amount of gatherings and usually not just family related. There's one, one thing I'm definitely seeing is we haven't had any real cluster cases <coughs> here in uh, Halifax. It seems to be internal transmission within houses. And that doesn't necessarily just mean that it was the two people in the house, but where were those two people prior, prior to that? So um, I would caution everybody to follow the guidances that have been set forth by the state, even, no matter how difficult it is um, during this upcoming holiday season. It's going to be different than it has in years past. Um, one of the updates to the Maven system, though, which will be nice, is um, just came down today that the contact tracing information will actually start to link into Maven so that I will have the ability to know where and when clusters have started, have started and, and developing from. So it's a step in the right direction towards, you know, in any of those potential areas, but there, um, I'll see how well it works. It's not up and running quite yet. And um, the only thing else that I would say is that um, some of the guidance is from CDC whether it be this business, any kind of business, is that they're strongly encouraging um, remote work, if possible, and or staggering of work shifts within buildings. So, um, something that the board might want to think about, something I can think about with the restaurants and the, uh, and the food establishments that I have, too. Okay. That's what I have for us so far. Thank you, Bob. Chief Averis, uh, you, uh, uh, I'm sure, have some comments on the testing program over the weekend. Yep, so the, um, we did the um, testing on Saturday and Sunday. Um, we, we did have cars lined up around 6 in the morning. But for the most part, it was a pretty steady flow throughout the day. Um, some just under 800 people tested over the, over the two days. And I believe at last count we had about 54 positives. We were still 
sorting out some of the numbers on that. Not all from Halifax, there was a lot of other towns that came and participated, but for the most part, I think everything went smoothly. There's a lot of lessons learned that we, if we decide to do something like this again, um, we can certainly fine tune it. Um, I know that a, a bunch of our surrounding communities now are doing the same thing. I think I had seven phone calls the following day saying, you know, what do you guys do, how do you do it? And um, Hanson, I believe, is doing one, partnering with the same company, and they're doing theirs next weekend. So not this weekend coming up, but the following, the following weekend. Other than that, we're continuing to do our employee testing program. We're going to post. We were up last this week, and we were going to we're going to post some additional dates both for the school and town hall on Monday. Um, I talked to Charlie a little bit about potentially expanding the testing to include the senior popula senior population. Now that we're getting our our footing um, in, in you know working out the bugs on doing the, the testing, so. Um, all positive. Um, Dr. Muse has been great to work. I just want to, you know, publicly recognize what he's done for us because, you know, without him, he he's basically given us the direction for everything and given, you know, his, he, he, you know, we, we're using his NPI number to do all this, and he's he's been outstanding to to work with and um, has been a great help to us. So. Um, he has already given us written standing orders for vaccine distribution. We have no idea whether or not that'll, how that's going to take place with the state. We saw this week they rolled out their plan on how vaccines will be distributed. Um, OEMS, uh, Department of Emergency Medical Services, has approved uh, ambulance providers to do vaccine distribution, but we don't know how that's going to play out once the state. Um, starts to hand it out to, whether they're going to hand it out to communities, we don't know that part yet, so um, that's about all I have. Chief, who is Dr. Muse, just for the um, Dr. Muse is the medical director for the fire department, so he's an phys emergency physician out of, out of, from Brockton Hospital, and um, he oversees all the ambulance services that are affiliated with Brockton Hospital, so. He does our routine run review. They do monthly M&M rounds, that type of thing. And now, like I said, he's been extremely supportive with all of our COVID efforts. Considering the challenges you had, uh, particularly with the weather on Saturday, I think that's a heck of an effort uh, to have gotten yeah. 800 tests done. Yeah, and I don't know if it's already been done, but I mean, it really was not one person that did that put that together. It was such a combination of efforts between so many different departments and you know everyone really came together and did whatever they could so you had to make um, on the fly adjustments all day right yeah we didn't expect that we we're gonna have like a hurricane which <laughs> we were ready to throw in the towel and truthfully between Steve Hayward and um, Scott Materna the idea came up for the highway bond and that couldn't have worked out better because you know it was almost a blessing that we had to deal with that weather because the highway bond is ideal and you know as I said to Charlie I said this was great that we were able to do it and it was a success, but I think it from like my thought is it was a great drill for if we do do vaccine distribution and you know if there's another pandemic down, down hope not, <laughs> down the road, it was a great drill to be able to uh, run through that over the course of the weekend. So you didn't get permission from Mother Nature to have it on the day? Huh? Uh, no. Have they talked about availability of vaccines and do they anticipate anything in terms I know of that some hospital like some of the hospitals are already get are going to start distributing to their employees on Tuesday I don't know if you've heard anything else Bob well, I've heard Tuesday also um, you know the, the thing with that and the two is you know not you know you can't do every nurse in the hospital just in case there's adverse reactions right. which would be the same in the emergency areas police and fire you're going to have to pick the people that you're going to do. So, you know, technically maybe to get your entire fire department, police department done, it could take you like three weeks. Sure. You know, two to three weeks. If, if they settled on a particular vaccine, I, I, I was hearing things about two different companies had developed a vaccine. Pfizer, is there, I think, is the one. Is there a commonality? Uh, do you, does anybody know? No. No. Really, yeah. just, just a curiosity I question. I know about 12 warnings. Um, on our DPH call, they are planning on talking about vaccination, so maybe I'll learn a little bit more. 
I'm just curious. Chief Shaws, anything? Uh, nothing COVID related. I, I just want to, you know, uh, publicly express my gratitude for Chief Averos in spearheading the effort for the testing. I think he did a great job. And like, like the board mentioned, you know, to having to deal with the weather and all that and being able to think on his feet like that, I think he should be commended, you know, commended for, for that doing it. Absolutely, everybody involved for that. Matter. Yeah, terrific. Is, is there a plan to have another one in Halifax, say two weeks after Christmas time? Is that um, we don't have a plan right now. I'm certainly open to it if that's something that the board wanted to do. I, as far as kids, I mean, there, there was a, an, a, a you know, there was an expense to it in that we had details there, we had police details there, we had to get, we have to get rid of all the, um, the, the um, hazardous waste, um, and unfortunately the CARES money dries up after, after the 30th, but um, if it's something that the board was interested in, we could, I could certainly put together a, uh, an estimate for that moving forward. You know, and I've talked to the chief, and we talk about that with the same situation with the schools now on December 30th. It's going to, you know, it will take a conscious decision that even under the emergency order, that we're going to be spending money, that we don't immediately have receipts, revenue to balance it off. Ultimately, anytime we have an emergency funding situation, we have to do that at some point. And what would likely happen is at the May special town meeting before we get to the annual is that we have an article for the COVID expenditures that we We're don't have there. matching funds for. And we would appropriate that money against free cash. But if it's necessary, you know, it's no different than a snowstorm and spending money beyond what you have in the snow budget. At some point you say, we've got to do this. We know we're going to have to pay that bill, but it's worth doing. If we administer vaccines, that's going to be an expense too, right? I mean, how's yeah. that's something we need yeah, to plan for? Yeah, uh, so a little well. interesting um, piece on that, Tom. I'm glad you brought that up. I was contacted from by our ambulance billing service yesterday about the vaccine distribution, and I guess Medicare has already passed some rules where ambulance services will be able to bill for the, the insurance companies for a vaccine. I, I mean, from what my understanding is no one will have to pay out of pocket for vaccine distribution, but we will have a billing mechanism for that where we do not have a billing mechanism for COVID. So I told them to, you know, definitely include us. I know Medicare, there's like a, a $600 application fee to be able to do that, and Medicare has waived all those application fees. Um, so our ambulance billing company is already set in the process of setting us up in the event that we do start distributing the vaccine, we'll be able to be, uh, we'll be able to, to, to bill that to the insurance company. Because that's important, because that's yeah. going to be huge by the end of it. Now, will we, any of the drugstores or pharmacies be able to pass that out to? I would assume, but I don't. Yeah, from what I've heard, uh, most of the pharmacies want to jump on board um, the same as they do with the flu shot. Right. So, um, that's even something um, on a small scale. Uh, I could set up um, potentially what Stop and Shop has done, you know, <coughs> clinics here in the past. Um, and then if it was a large scale event, like the uh, chief had said, you know, we, we uh, both train in emergency dispensing sites. You know, so um, whether we would use the new scenario of the barn versus right. the, the scenario in the school, um, you know, we could get it uh, done quickly. It's going, be it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that rolls out, how much resistance there is to the vaccine and how many people initially might be interested. And right. Then there's the one <coughs> seers and, uh, and that whole thing. It's, been, it's an interesting time, Yeah. if not challenging. Anyway, um, moving along. I did, not, I did want to have Bob and you on a discussion just very briefly. We have obviously people who have been out uh, for various reasons. They would like to come back. We're looking at the CDC guidance about having positive cases but no symptoms. And you know, I talked a little with Bob about this. It appears, you know, we always talk about 14-day period, it appears I, whether that I was a, we were in error or whether that's been changed over the months. The, what it's now saying is if you are test positive but don't have symptoms, now it's 10 days. 
and we have employees who want to be able to get back here. And um, I guess between Bob and myself, we want to be able to tell employees, yes, come back after 10, or you've got another few days, or you need a, you need a test that shows negative, or you, have, you, know, you can come back, but you can't have symptoms, obviously. And I didn't know if Bob wanted to offer anything that we can tell employees. Well, it's on a very individual basis, though, because first of all, I have to make sure that they haven't shown any symptoms. So that you know, comes down to integrity of whoever's giving me that information. Because I know I have to need to know when the clock actually started ticking, so I can tell you when it can stop ticking. <coughs> um, they do find that if you follow the proper procedures, um, that 10 days coming back and still monitoring yourself uh, for any symptom for the last four days only shows about a 1% risk factor versus the 14 day um, quarantine period. Basically what's, what they're finding is people just aren't following the 14 day period anyway. So by potentially offering the 10 day solution with all things done right, um, it's, it will probably, or should be, just as effective as what 14 days would be. Um, but I would really need to contact Trace, each, each individual or each associate um, that we have uh, personally, and not just let a department and say, yeah, you, you, know, you can come back. So uh, they have the guidance in place or agreement with you know, me calling because but my opt-out on anything would be, okay, it's 14 days. I'll work you backwards if I really think it's safe. But if I don't, I'm sticking with 14 days. And if they like it or not, it's 14 days. Right. So I don't have a problem drawing that line in the sand. So Bob, should the employee then, if they're interested in coming back, should they talk with you directly then? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Whether even to the schools, you know, and I'm in constant contact with the school nurses. I talked to Penny today, I talked to Daryl on the other day, you know, so. Um, they can come on my plate. But I do, I, I think it will be effective um, using the, the 10 day period done right. Has to be done right, as opposed to just mandating 14. All right, moving on. And Thank you, everybody. Please, Chief, you have an appointment? Yeah, you want. Yeah. yeah. So if it pleases the board, on uh, December 8th, myself and uh, the uh, command, command staff, Sergeant Bennett, Pat, uh, Sterling, and Caprio, conducted an all board interview with, with permanent intermittent candidate Michael Bonkowski. I would respectfully request the board to approve our recommendation to extend a conditional offer of employment to the candidate. Um, so we'll buy you about uh, Officer Bonkowski. is a lifelong resident of Halifax. He's committed to serving his community. He's a Civil League Regional High School graduate. He attended Massawaya Community College and uh, has a degree in uh, criminal justice from Bridgewater State University. Uh, he's attended the uh, Municipal Police Training Committee Reserve Intimate Academy in 2015. Uh, he worked for Hall as a special um, officer there. He received a life saving award in 2018 from the Hall Police Department. He was appointed to Halifax as a special on April 30th of 2019. Uh, he's received a letter of accommodation from the Board of Selectmen for an incident that occurred in, on February of 2020. I believe he's an asset to the department. Uh, he has really stepped up in filling shifts. As you can see, he's actually going to work at 4 o'clock. That's why he's in uniform today, not in his uh, business suit. Uh, he's well respected by his peers, and in my opinion, he'll be a great uh, candidate for the position, an asset to the, to the town and to the department. I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, would you like to have him come well, up and well, have questions of him? You're the expert on business. I mean, I'm not, not an expert on anything. <laughs> <laughs> you survived you survive more than a year. <laughs> Certainly more expert than us. So. Chief, Chief, do you want to just say what, what's the difference between special and permanent? Okay, uh, so as a special, he has no civil service protection. He's, he's not in the civil service. Uh, Officer Bonkowski took the civil service exam. 
Uh, he uh, he's on, on on the civil service list, and the next step up is reserve intermittent, where he has civil standing civil service standing, and which kind of segues into my next uh, request for the board, is if you uh, offer him the position as reserve intermittent, I would recommend the board take a vote on calling civil service for a full time police list, and we can uh, continue with the process of sending him for his PAT, for psych eval, um, and uh, have him go to, actually go to the academy for a full-time police officer's position. So the only the difference, you know, they, they, you know, they back us up on, sh on shifts, they, they can take details, but they have no civil, no civil service uh, uh, standing, which he would, he would now, as uh, you know, once uh, you appoint him. And be available to be called up for the permanent position, is that? That's correct, yes. By becoming a permanent a minute on that civil service list, he moves to the top of the list. Right, because yeah, we had right. no other applicants for that position, so he would be the only applicant right now. Does anybody have any questions or comments, or, or can yeah. I entertain a motion? No, no, no. Should I just introduce himself. Do you have any questions, oh, yeah, sir? Sure. Can I? Uh, sure. Come on out. Seems like it was just the other day we uh, appointed. Shake your hands, but I think we're <laughs> COVID protocol. Uh, yeah, so as you said, my name is Michael Bonkarewski. I've lived in town for 29 years, or almost 29 years. Um, I graduated from Silver Lake, went to Massasoit for a year, transferred to Bridgewater where I got my criminal justice bachelor's. Um, completed the part-time intermittent academy after that. I went a year after I graduated. Um, I started in Hull and then found myself here. Um, I was friends with Sergeant Sterling and he said that he was looking for people that wanted to work. Um, I always want to work. There's times where I've done 56 hours here. Uh, just did that a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I'm self-motivated, ready to start doing this job full time. Any questions for anybody? Yeah, question. What does fair, firm, and consistent mean to you? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Fair, firm, and consistent. Uh, for fair, uh, always be fair and in, impartial in judgment. Um, what was the uh, other two? Firm and consistent. Firm. Uh, just the, for firm, uh, always you know be clear and concise with what you're trying to portray to the person that you're talking to um, and then the third sorry consistent consistent uh, yeah and always be consistent with your judgments um, whether it's a friend or someone you've never met before uh, always be consistent with how you treat someone um, which I've always done. Uh, I've never had, whether it was here or Hull, I've never had anyone uh, say that I did my job unprofessionally or anything along those lines. Thank you. Anything? I'm good. It seems like the other day we spoke to you and it was, what, a yeah, year or so ago? Just a year ago. <laughs> Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I will move that we take the recommendation from Chief Ernest that we appoint the officer to a permanent medical position based on whether he passes his physical and training. Uh, Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. You don't have to go see the uh, tone. Also, just so the board is aware, um, I believe you are already aware that, that the other department is, is uh, heading towards certification uh, to the Mass Accreditation Commission. And one of the requirements is that every new uh, hire 
or new recruit, pass the psych evaluation. We've never had that in Halifax. So uh, Officer Von Kabushka will be the first one to have that as, in addition to his requirements of the PAT and the uh, physical, I mean, and the medical examination. So he's going to set the standard. He'll set the standard. You do have a 330, um, I believe they're out in the hallway. We're going to have to switch some people around. I think I'll meet together. That was way too quick to volunteer to leave. <laughs> I gotta go. Thank you, John. Take care, bro. Just so it's out, uh, it's, uh, I know there's some, possibly some veterans that might be listening to the meeting. So I just want to let them know that. Um, um, uh, Mr. Kraft from uh, the Patriots, uh, and, and, and alongside other organizations, set up a program where they fill a uh, Lowe's bucket with uh, coats for uh, Navy vets and uh, other uh, care packages and a whole box of PPEs. Uh, Officer Simpson went up to uh, um, Gillette Stadium the other day to pick it up. I've left that stuff with the uh, veterans agent. So if any veteran out there or if the board knows of any veterans that are needy, they need some ja uh, jackets or thing for the winter to contact uh, 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 Noel Corey and he'll uh, make sure that they get those uh, jackets and stuff to the uh, veterans. Oh, terrific. Okay, nice thank you. Done. That's it. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if we can, we can try and get a few of these things knocked off before 3.30. Uh, recycling, we have a bill, 1704, for fiscal 2021. Pam made you copies of the letter. I didn't know if the board had him corrected, but I believe the board had previously denied the request for abatement. Um, and the person is asking for the board to reconsider. So um, if you don't want to reconsider, if you don't want to make a change, there's nothing for you to do. If you do want to reconsider, then you'll need to do that. I, I, I read the uh, communication, and it, as much as I feel and have empathy, I, I think it's difficult where we have denied others. But I'm open to comments. I, as, as with I, I sympathize with her. You know, and if I thought there was something on our part, the cause of the that can receive on time and basis, a payment on a time and basis, that we should give it some thought. But I I saw nothing in the letter that showed me. I don't know how that's happening. There, they will be meeting with you at 3:30. But have a seats, please. Oh, Sit down. Okay. Yes. So. I, I, I don't think I don't think we can approve this because we open ourselves up to all the other abatement requests that didn't come in on time. So exactly as uh, Troy put it earlier, consistent. So I, I don't believe any action is necessary. Unless, unless someone's moving something, then what Pam will say is that you know you can, you can have me. One of us will contact the. Uh, Bill Mayor and send a note simply saying the board reviewed this and confirmed that the are taking no action is still in place. Um, legal is no report. Folks have a root project. Scott's was trying to work out his options to cover the roof during the winter. Field snow, there's no report. Green Earth is here. We'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. So Bud's goods, um, based on what the board had done previously, um, I believe. Each of you have a copy of the final, but I can pass this along if the board's ready to sign a new HCA with them. This is the standalone staple copy we have, correct? No. Yeah, I gave you each a this copy is theirs. Um, without the red lining and everything, just for your yep. reference. Um, you can pick one of those copies, but Ben has a copy at this point. All right, let's all somebody sign. Wanted, if somebody wanted to move, and then second, to approve the revised HCA, basically the, the biggest change is being that they would be adding um, indoor cultivation and manufacturing to the HCA. They'll still need to go back up to the Canvas Control Commission for a revised provisional license to expand um, their uses to include those. And then they'll still need to come back to the planning board for a site review and a special permit. 
So moved. We should all sign the same copy. Yes. You, you, you have a copy. Okay. It's been moved. You want to second it, Gordon, or? I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, and then um, we're almost at eight, except for three thirty back, so um, I can return eight or the lane once we're uh, finished the conversation with Breeder. So, gentlemen, um, where things stand, obviously the board's in receipt of the revised HCA. They've got everything just got it, so there, that, it doesn't matter. Um, the board is just having kind of getting it now. It a copy has gone to town council for review. Obviously, I don't have any comments or anything. The only thing I did note um, very quickly with you, obviously, you did incorporate. Change the title. You did incorporate. Do you want to copy? Well, basically, we'll need two copies, yeah. So I'll take, we can use. Okay, we'll do it. Look, we'll get the t we'll get the titles changed. Yeah, come by tomorrow. Uh, we'll get the signatures. Yeah. All right, that's all right. Um, yeah. Right, I because we took it in March. I'll grab this one. And the board changed the titles. Yeah, throw it back. Um, I apologize. The um, obviously you took a fair amount from the budget goods HCA, but also incorporated a fair amount of language that's. I guess in two parts. One is particular because it's a retail establishment versus a cultivation manufacturing. But second, there, there's a fair amount of language in there that isn't in the Bud's Goods or it's changed significantly from the Bud's Goods language. Um, but it's gone to town council for review. It's, the board has copies. They haven't had a chance to read the updated HCA, but you can bring them up to date um, on anything to do with the site or the HCA or anything else, I guess. Okay. Yeah, well, I have a presentation packet I'd like to hand out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can give that to the truck. Okay. I, I've got to recuse myself because this is the right. Mont Ponson Street. Gordon has a family that own a joining property, so he has to recuse himself because he has a potential conflict of interest. Okay. Yeah, so so basically, um, so my name is John Pedrick, as you know, we, we met before. Uh, this is my partner, Bob Maker, and that's my partner, Matthew Collins. So, so basically, we've been working with um, the the, the uh, property owners at 657 Montfonson Street. As, as you know, it's uh, being rented out to be Twin Lakes Liquors, and they do have space available on the left side of the building that that we've entered into an agreement with, as far as a, a lease goes. Um, and and what we have here is just you know some information about our mission statement. A, a little bit of information about the location that also calls out, you know, like that the zoning was changed from from industrial over to um, commercial, and the date of when that happened, and it also calls out that this location is is well within the guidelines of not near a school, not where children con congregate, uh, not near a um, another marijuana establishment, and it's not near. Um, uh, with a poor liquor. So we feel that we're well within the, the guidelines of, of what the, the town bylaw and the, and the state law is in regards to that. Um, one of the things like when we were searching out locations is, is we, we picked this site in particular because of the amount of parking that's available. As you know, <clears throat> or I believe you know, yeah. most of that four acre site, approximately four acre site is paved. Um, which would which would lead to be able to get us into a, a fair amount of parking. I don't know the exact amount of parking spots yet. We haven't gone down that path with uh, with an engineer or architect, but we did engage with someone that you know as we go through the process that we'll be able to come up with drawings and a number of spots, things like that. Because we know that is a big deal uh, in this industry, you know. <clears throat> um, Plus, it's also on the outskirts of town. You know, it does abut Hanson, so the Rasa Abut is 
within, you know, Hanson as well. We, we did look at a, a other sites in town, one in particular in an industrial zone on Home Street. We did have discussions with the landlord numerous times, but then the, the, the discussions just went cold. And, and at the end of the day, we realized that, that the address where it was was right next to two, ra two sets of railroad tracks. And we felt at the end of the day, with, with the railroad tracks there, somebody sitting there trying to either get into the store, out of the store, with the train station exiting, that unfortunately, like someone may have gotten caught in those tracks, here comes the train, and it's a whole different ballgame. I mean, given, you know, traffic impact study would have called that out, I, I, would, I would think. So that's why, you know, Bob found this in conjunction with, uh, you know, the, the, the owners are actually customers of Bob's at, from Shaw Supermarket, and that's how we found this location. Um, they, they are doing currently extensive renovation now. They did rip down the the restaurant that was to the left, which I guess, you know, I didn't see it prior to that, but I guess it was a big eyesore in the town. So they're trying to clean up the site, work through it, and, you know, and they're happy to have us as a tenant. You know, I, I know that, that, you know, there was discussion about, um, you know, being next to a liquor store. And I also know that, you know, the town is aware that, that you know, it, it's okay to be next to a liquor store. I'm not saying you agree with it, but you know, it, by, from a legal standpoint, it's okay to, to be next to one. Um, we did have, um, you know, an engineer just draw up some preliminary plans just to get an idea of the, of the size of the location and how we think it's gonna work. It's just preliminary. There's, there's a lot of changes we do have to make in regards to um, security. If you're taking a look at the, uh, this particular page in the document. And then of course, the biggest piece in this industry is security. Um, you know, and as you met, you know, I don't know if you recall, you met Jay, that's been a security expert for 50 plus years, uh, you know, down in Connecticut, and he's going to be a big part of this, you know. He, he, um, he, he you know, he specializes, he has a lot of uh, high-end customers he's worked with over the years, you know, developing security plans, and, and, you know, in the event of, you know, what to do if, a, you know, you, you get caught, you're like a bomb threat, or what to do in the event of a fire, or what to do in the event of a holdup. I mean, hopefully that'll never be the case, but he has manuals, things like that in place, and training people to, you know, how to handle such situations. I mean, as, as we go through this, we, we felt that we just recently came up with a way to, to mitigate that type of issue. Instead of, you know, a lot of stores, they have, the, you know, the, the, the bud tender, if you will, at the cash register, the product behind them, and like they're, you know, individually picking and whatnot. So we think we're gonna go with a, with a model of, you work with the bud tender at, at a point of sale, and then you go over to a window, pick up your product there. That way there you can contain all the stuff in one area, and you only have two people handling the product, you know, and, and sending it out the door. You know, we, we think that's a really good idea. Instead of trying to load up a store against back walls all the way around and having individuals uh, picking the product. So that's, you know, that's not uh, on the layout, but we think, you know, we think that's gonna be the method that um, we're gonna end up doing. Um, you know, in, in part of the packet, we also have benefits to, you know, to, the, to the town, to the state. We're expecting 18 full-time employees between uh, you know working in the retail store and being in the back office, and then you know local jobs and training you know, is obviously a big thing right now for everybody. Um, you know we intend to conduct business with local vendors and contractors when when that's possible. Um, you know we also see a you know an increase to the to the town of Halifax revenue base you know based upon property tax. You know that's separate from the host community agreement. And you know, we think we can help stimulate the, um, you know, the local economy as well, um, and whatnot. As we go further in, I, I, you know, we do have some projected sales. We have a we have a low number range and a high number range, um, you know, on here. And we're, you know, 
we have a projected opening date of, of if everything goes right, July 1st of 2022. So we think it's going to take 18 plus months, you know, to go through the process with the town, and then you know, and the state to get the uh, the license and work on the build out and whatnot. Um, you know, and then we also call out if, if we think you know, like what what could help or hurt the number, you know, in regards to this. Um, and which you know, as you know, host community agreement and, and SIF is, is a five year is a five year agreement. Um, you know, w with the town, with with any uh, retail establishment. You know, and then if you go towards the further back into the uh, into the packet, we just have uh, individual bios about the three of us, e and Jay being the security specialist. But but we think. You know, like we we here to, to to try to make this as smooth as possible and have the least impact to to the town because you know unfortunately a lot of people they they panic over what the product is and I, you know I can understand why you know it's new it's only been in the state for a few years you know but but as you you know read like you don't hear about incidents issues things like that. Because you know, at the end of the day, it does turn into like any other business, where, where the police aren't coming there all the time and things like that. Because people just want to go in, they just want to do their shopping, you know, head out, you know, and you know, take the stuff home or, or you know, and do with it what they do with it, you know. But you know, we're, we're looking forward to working with the town and you know, building a relationship, you know, not just with the board of selectmen, but of the other, uh, you know. A police chief and special permitting uh, department and stuff like that, you know. All right. Uh, the post agreement that we're looking at, this has been reviewed by Attorney Mayo? No, well, that's a good point. We, we just got it today. Okay. It's going to him. It's not been reviewed at all. We don't have any okay. or anything like that. Yeah, like the host agreement, we had to take, you know, as Charlie mentioned, that it was, you know, written for, for grow or specifically outdoor grow. And, you know, we had legal go in and take a look at all of it. And, and we, 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 fought, we, we, well, first we sent an HCA and then the board, you know, felt better working with the one that was already in place, which, which is fine. So we went back to, you know, legal and then they took what some of the information you had left it, boilerplate information and, and then took ours and added in paragraphs accordingly in the same format. Okay. Yeah. So customized it to Yeah, you yeah. I mean I, I know there's you know there's gonna be some questions or some debates, some you know, back and forth, I'm, I'm sure of it. You know, which is fine, you know. I mean do you, like is the is the format does does the town send it to legal, legal sends it to our legal or they send it Back well, to you, well, to well, well, the first thing is obviously you went to town council today. Okay. That's when I got it. I got it today. It's gone to town council. We're not going to get an immediate response from that. Okay. Um, since he's working for the board, uh, he would provide any comments to the board first. Okay. And then if the board wanted to proceed, my expectation would probably be, might be drafts go back and forth between council for the town and your attorneys. Yeah. And so at this point, there's really nothing for us to do other than no. Ask you have a copy. You can read it. Um, yeah. I, you know, the board might want to consider, continue, and not necessarily that you need to be here, but the board will probably put it on the agenda for the 17th when they're meeting again. If they have something from uh, Attorney Mayo by that point, they can comment on that and go from there. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Right. Does anyone have any questions or anything or? So one thing, you have a table here that mentions the community impact fee. Is, obviously, we also get the sales tax revenue of 3%. No? So, well, the 3% three, the, the 3 we, would be paid from us yes. based upon sales. Right, but there's community impact fee. That's what that 3% is. Right, but there's also the 3% sales tax for this bill is received. I, Matt, you know, because 
That we know I that's thought not that was the same thing. I thought no, that three percent was no, because for instance, for Bud's Goods, we're getting a community impact fee of three percent. Retail stores, on the other hand, also have another three percent added on for the sales tax for municipalities. For instance, there's a state sales tax. I don't remember what the percentage is, but there's also a three percent sales tax for municipality. You might want to go back and look. Okay, I was under the impression that that was the same. That no. fee was the three percent we were. No, the community impact fee is entirely different. The that, that's for five years. Well, yes, that's one of the points there. The sales tax is forever. The right. community impact fee is for five years, then that can be renegotiated. Okay. Uh -oh. Well, the, if the sales tax is forever, then that would just be part of the, the sale. And that would be right. But I'll, I'll, I'll look my point that. is that you, know, you provide the table, which is very helpful in helping the board figure out okay. what, what's the revenue stream look like for coming years. But it doesn't include the 3% sales tax in this table. It specifically mentions the community impact fee. It doesn't mention the sales tax. Okay. I'll, I'll look into that. Um, is it okay if I send you a revised packet before well, you sure. I don't know if you have to post it or anything. No, I'll, I'll, I'll wait, I'll hold off. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, for me, I'd wait until we got something back from the attorney Okay. to, to be able to comment on it. Yeah, that, that's fine. Um, I, I smoke when I walk, so it's okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm smoking when I'm walking at the time. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't, I, I, yeah, I can't understand. You don't want me here. No. <laughs> you all set? I can't. No, I don't have any questions. I, I, yeah. I'm okay. Like to wait until we get the final copy or this close to it before we start questioning. Okay. All right, All right great. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look into that, Charlie. I'll let you know. Charlie, I do. I have one question for you. The the three percent and then the three percent sales tax is that on the CCC? Where, where would I find that? Well, it'd be part of the state statute. Yeah. So the CCC should have information. About I, okay. That. All right. I'll tell. I must have missed it. All right. Unless you gentlemen hey, have yeah, something. Yeah. No. I, no. No. We're good Enjoy for your now. Holiday. See you soon. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, we, I skipped over a hill delay simply because we were having these gentlemen here at 3.30. Um, just to review, there's a proposed 21 unit multi-family project that is going to the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals. There's been some initial discussions at the Planning Board last Tuesday. My understanding is that um, the developer is going to bring that back. Um, in terms of subdivision and our uh, site plan review uh, for a later date. The, if the project is to move forward, it would need a special permit and variances from the Zoning Board of Appeals. The initial hearing on that is scheduled for Monday. That's what I have right now. I don't know if I have all the information, but um, no one's told me anything specific otherwise. You know, for instance, I've been in communication with uh, the staff this week and no one's mentioned any changes in the schedule for Monday, so. But, well, if anyone's interested, they have the opportunity, well, limited opportunity tomorrow and Monday to get any more information, but the meeting is Monday night. Right. Um, documents are up on the website under the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll add a link up the Planning Board also, not the Planning Board's handling it not Monday, but if people look in one place, they'll still find it. Um, we did get one letter from one of the residents over on Hilda Lane. Um, let's see, it said uh, Roller and Brian Webby had sent a letter to the board opposing the project due to the current road conditions, which are poor, flooding of streets, and the potential strain on the environment, schools, and the fire and police departments. Um, I don't know if, how involved the board wants to be involved in the process of uh, the hearings and permitting, um, that's up to the board to make that decision. Well, right now we have two elected boards dealing with this, both the planning board and the zoning board of appeals. Well, zoning's not elected, they're appointed by you all. Oh, the zoning board, I'm sorry, you're right. I, I think, for me, we'll watch it play out and see what's ultimately, because my understanding is it's in flux as to what's gonna be presented. So, I don't know that I'm in a position to make any comments at this time. Anybody else? I, I just on 
you know, social media, I've been telling people whether they're for it or against it to give the input to the boards. Charlie commented back and gave the secretary's email addresses for everyone. So if anyone has any comments, I would suggest that they contact the zoning board and the planning board, like Charlie suggested. I'd like to speak with experience in this type of thing. I read some of the information on it, but I'm still a novice. All right. Having said all that, I don't believe there's anything else. Is there anything yeah, else? Do you have anything else to report? In that case, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, um, before we did that, what's oh, our meeting schedule? One more report on education. No. Uh, what's our meeting schedule for next week? So next week would be, be Thursday, Thursday at 3. Okay. That's it, just Thursdays now. And then after that, my plan would be for you all to be on the 28th. Monday after Christmas. So that's ten, no, there's nothing post or anything, but yeah. since you're obviously not meeting 24th or 31st, okay. so you're probably going to need to meet for some reason on, you know, before the end of the month, COVID, not COVID. So just put that in as penciled in and we'll see what about that See what develops and you can always post a meeting within 48 hours. Okay, I was just, yeah. Yeah. thank you. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous to adjourn. Thank you very much.